see them do a quick example with someone. So have have a thing. Has anyone got an example that they think might um, be coming across information serendipitously? I'm going to see if we can describe it in relation to this. Stay up. Any ideas? I have a plant in the audience, you know who you are, who will have to do it if, you do, if no one thinks of one. I know it's hard. That's why this, okay, we've got one, that's great. Okay. happened just now at this very minute right. because what you've put up there is a missing part of the jigsaw that I need for building a syntax of in my grammar of creative spaces because this is part of what I've been describing is um, chance meeting with information ideas and people and this actually <coughs> puts it into a really lovely structure so I need to talk to you about it see what you've published, how can I cite it, and how can I build it into the next piece of work that I'm going to be writing when I get back up to Scotland um, at the beginning of the week. So, so it's, <coughs> it's fantastic. So then we can talk later. So um, this is under review at the moment. Well, the editors of J.Doc in the city, I think, in Portland. Um, okay, so this, was, so this was something where you, you were looking you were looking at chance as an as an element of research of, of, um, of how people get ideas in physical spaces how people get ideas in physical spaces okay and so um, were you looking for a kind of theoretical angle on that yes okay so you were looking for a kind of theoretical way of being able to um, describe the role of chance in physical spaces yeah okay um, and then so what what about what about this kind of caused that spark? Um, I think we're at this main connection. It's just all there. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, so <laughs> let, let's go into this. Where, where do you, what made you think there might be some value from this way of thinking about things? So this, I'm assuming this is a, a kind of new way of thinking about something that you're already trying to, to It's a out. new way of describing and articulating what I've already been thinking about, um, but doing it in a very structured and in a way that I think that coming to the exploit bit, I'll be able to take and drive my own thinking forward with. Okay, so then what, what might you plan to do if this ends up getting published, which we know is a review is going to say. Um, yeah, so what, what things might you think uh, you could, you could um, do to exploit the value of this? Um, to, well, it'll, it'll become part of one of my chapters. So I think it's published. Oh, brilliant, thanks for that. Um, and anyone, anyone else had one that we can try and, try and talk about in relation to this? Right, let's, let's try it. This is a, a curious one, but it's got a um, particular end point on it. Um, okay. And it came about because um, I've been doing some work with um, somebody um, who was a PhD student. And uh, I hadn't seen him for a while, and he was doing his PhD at Smart Lab, um, University of East London. So I went on the Smart Lab site to see whether there was any description of how he was getting on there. And I was looking some sort of search thing and some things came up. And um, I 
clicked on what I thought was one of the links. And the link was to Alison there. And I looked at what she was doing, and I thought, my God, this is Spires. So I just sent her an email say, saying, why don't you join up and see what we do? <laughs> and here she is, and she's going to be taking over us, running it. And it was just curious, because I said it came up from a quite different reason, and then it just twigged in my mind, and I just sort of saw that just by chance. Right, okay, so why, why, were you, why were you looking for information about this bit? Because I've been doing some work with him, and I wanted to know how he'd sort of, because I haven't seen him for a while, I wanted to see how that work had developed, and I thought there might be something, you know, him describing it or something like that. So he, so he was over at UEL, you're at a different institution, presumably. You wanted to figure out how he was getting along. Yep. Through, through doing that kind of search, you then saw a link to Alison. Was that, was that through his, you looked at his No, PhD it was just by chance. It's because uh, Alison's doing a PhD at uh, Smart Lab as well. Okay, so it was a kind of sort of department, Smart Lab, lab pages. Ended up seeing seeing something about Alison's work, or did yeah, you just yeah, just like yeah, so you saw something thing. about the type of work Alison was doing. Said to yourself, okay, this um, this really matches the kind of stuff that they do at Spires. So wouldn't it be good to talk to Alison, suggest to her that she might come to yes. Spires, and actually now it's led to Alison taking a really active role in Spires. That, yeah, that, that's that's that yeah. Okay, so okay, so that so we could probably describe that in the sense of. Making making a connection now. The connection here, I would have said, is between uh, it's it's for kind of being able to build build and enhance spires, basically. So that was a kind of latent thing that was in your head, but maybe you hadn't even thought about consciously, or maybe you had. And then um, Alison had been the the person that had um, met that need, but wasn't anticipated originally as a means of addressing the need. Okay. So, how, how did you see there was some value there? So I'm guessing this was when you saw the description of Alison's yeah. work. Yeah. So you saw the work match the kind of goals of Spires? Yeah, that's right. Because, was... so, because I'm on the steering group of Spires, really obviously I keep thinking about that and think, well, where do we find right. new people to it? So that's always in my mind. And it just sort of immediately, I thought, this is just amazing, really. You know? But you didn't know about Alison before? No, I didn't met her before. absolutely not, no. Didn't know she existed. Yeah. No. Okay. So then, um, then what did what did you do? Did you just drop her an email? Yeah, I just sort of thought, well, I'll just send her an email in case she's interested. Okay, and then the you, you mentioned taking over, so I'm trying to get at what the outcome is. So of course, as an yeah, that's yeah. the outcome really, because I didn't know whether she would respond or anything like that. Yeah. And then did you ever reflect on the experience? I did actually, because I just sort of thought, <laughs> what I did reflect on was thinking, my God, if we just find someone like Anson by by chance like that, there must be loads and loads of other people that we don't know about, and how do we find them? That's what I did reflect on. Thank you both for that, fantastic. <laughs> okay, so, so a couple of minutes left. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about everything that I could talk about. I'm just going to briefly tell you that you can use these ideas of chance, insight, and value to ask yourself how much of each of these things were involved in an experience. If the answer is none for some of them, then I'd argue that, that, these, that this experience isn't part serendipity. So this is a way of thinking of serendipity as something a bit wider. I'm going to talk about that. 